One thing really nice about putty epoxy is you can use it for just about anything. It's sort of the duct tape of the glue or the epoxy world. So the question is, which putty epoxy is the best? Today we're going to be testing 12 different brands, so let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll tap and thread each of the epoxies and see which one has the most strength. Then we'll see how much weight it takes to crush each of the epoxies. We'll repair pipes that have holes in them and then see how much pressure it takes before the pipe bursts. We'll use a putty epoxy to repair a hole in the cylinder head and see how long it'll run. Finally, we're going to repair a broken chain with putty epoxy and see just how strong it is. At a price of $12.70 or $0.79 cents per ounce, the least expensive product we'll be testing is PC7. PC7 is definitely not a putty and is more like a paste. I'm only including it to compare just how a paste performs compared to a putty. You can saw, drill, tap, mold, sand, paint, and machine this product. Bonds to wood, metals, glass, tile, masonry, rubber, fiberglass, and some plastics in all combinations. Cure time is 24 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The mix ratio is 1 to 1. Made in USA. Before we apply the products, we have quite a bit of prep work to do. I'll be using these PVC end caps for tapping, threading, and then testing the pullout strength using three samples for each brand. To test the ability of these products to repair a damaged pipe, we'll be using a drill to keep the pipe in motion while we rough up the outer surface of the pipe using a flap disc. Then we'll use a drill to bore a quarter inch hole in the pipe. I cleaned all the pipes using brake parts cleaner. I then used a rubber pipe spaced one inch apart to ensure I applied an equal thickness of each product. I also applied vinyl tape to keep the rubber spacer from moving out of position. This one inch cube will serve as a mold for our compression testing. I'll be filling this with the epoxy putty, then remove this plastic cover, and then we'll do some testing with the epoxy. It took a couple of hours to measure out, knead, and then apply all these products. I cleaned up the table and changed gloves between each of the brands. Once I applied all the products, I kept the shop temperature above 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 48 hours to make sure all the products fully cured. Mix equal amounts of A and B until uniform in color. Man, PC7 was very difficult to work with. It was more like spreading toothpaste instead of putty. It was very hard to form it and it just seemed to go everywhere. So I got quite a bit of cleanup work to do before we begin the testing. The belt sander did a terrific job removing the excess material from all the test pieces. I sanded the PVC end caps on both sides. I sanded both sides of the one inch by one inch cube and we'll measure compressive strength of each product later in the video. Each of the test pieces cleaned up very nicely. I'll be using a 1364 drill. The final thing we need to do before we begin the testing is to drill and tap the PVC end caps. I'm gonna use a quarter inch tap for the PC7. No issues tapping the PC7. Let's begin our first test using three samples from each brand. I'll drop the quarter inch bolt through the puller arm and the test piece holder. Then I'll fully thread the bolt through the test piece. Once the test begins, I'll keep adding pressure until something breaks. Let's test PC7 first. PC7 did a pretty good job at 886 pounds in the first sample. It did slightly better in the second sample at 988 pounds. It did exactly the same at 988 pounds on the third test. So very consistent results from PC7. The second least expensive brand we'll be testing for $22.95 for 16 ounces or $1.43 per ounce is this KBS New Metal Epoxy Putty. Adheres to metals, plastic, fiberglass, and prime surfaces. Can be sanded, primed, and painted. Mixes like clay, hardens like steel. We're going to test that. One to one mix ratio, cut what you need. Can be used for boats, cars, engines, pipes, mufflers, pools, and home. There's no information on the packaging indicating where this product is made. New Metal did an amazing job in the first sample at 1,623 pounds. It did nearly the same at 1,609 pounds in the second sample. The third test piece was very close once again at 1,614 pounds. So New Metal takes the lead from PC7. At a price of $6.94 for 4 ounces or $1.74 per ounce is this Odie brand. It's an all-purpose bonding putty. Hardens like steel in minutes. Made in USA. Odie did even better than PC7 on the first sample at 1,131. It was down some to 908 on the second. It was up again to 1,010 on the third. So New Metal holds on to the lead. At a price of $32.28 for 16 ounces or $2.02 .02 per ounce is this POR 15. Mixes like clay, hardens like steel. Stays in place, moldable consistency. Cures chemically. Resistant to shrinking and cracking. Can be sanded, drilled, sawed, and painted. POR is made in USA. POR 15 really struggled on the first sample at 656 pounds. It really struggled on the second sample at 481 pounds. The third sample was slightly better at 530, so New Metal holds on to the lead. At a price of $4.98 for 2 ounces, or $2.49 per ounce, is this JB Weld Steel Stick. World's Strongest Bond, we're going to test that. Strength, 900 PSI. Set time, 5 minutes. 
Cure time one hour. Great for automotive and machine parts, fuel tanks, exhaust systems, plumbing, rust damage, household repairs. JB Weld is made in USA. JB Weld did very well at 1,268 pounds in the first sample, but that's over 300 pounds lower than new metal. The second test sample was two pounds better than the first at 1,270. The third sample was down slightly to 1,253. So very consistent and good results for JB Weld, but not enough to take the lead from new metal. At a price of $18.13 for seven ounces or $2.59 per ounce is this A plus B epoxy putty. Cures underwater. Made in USA. The A plus B earned a C on the first sample at only 292 pounds. It did slightly better at 316 pounds on the second sample. It was down some to 206 pounds on the third. So A plus B averaged more than 1,000 pounds lower than the liter. At a price of $11.99 for four ounces or $3 per ounce is this EP400 epoxy putty. Bonds to and repairs almost any surface. Sets hard as steel in 15 to 20 minutes. You can use this on steel, wood, aluminum, PVC, fiberglass, copper, ceramics, and more. Made in USA. The EP400 really struggled at 375 pounds on the first test piece. The second sample was slightly lower at 328 pounds. The third sample was up a little to 339 pounds. So very consistent results for EP400. At a price of $6.35 for two ounces or $3.18 per ounce is this quick steel, steel reinforced epoxy putty. Metal repair. The strength is very impressive at 5,950 PSI. It can handle up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The bond holds to minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 68 degrees Celsius. Set time is only five minutes. Full cure in one hour. Made in USA. Quick steel did a great job at 993 pounds on the first test piece. It was down slightly to 964 on the second. It was down again slightly to 856 on the third. So new metal holds on to the lead. At a price of $6.99 or $3.50 per ounce, is this Gorilla all-purpose epoxy stick? It claims to be incredibly strong, 1,550 PSI. Gorilla is made in USA with domestic and imported materials. Gorilla let go at 819 pounds on the first sample. It did slightly better at 899 on the second. It was down again slightly to 838 on the third. So very consistent results for Gorilla. At a price of $7.98 for two ounces or $3.99 per ounce is this Loctite repair putty. Loctite is made in Spain. Loctite let go at 424 pounds in the first test piece. It did slightly better on the second at 479 pounds. It was down again a little to 400 pounds on the third. So new metal holds on to a commanding lead. At a price of $8.95 for two ounces or $4.48 per ounce, is this Prattly Steel Putty. It claims to be high strength, can be machined. It can even be used to repair radiators. It adheres to metal, stone, cement, concrete, slate, glass, wood, and most rigid surfaces. Prattly is made in South Africa. Prattly let go at 452 pounds on the first. It was slightly lower to 401 pounds on the second. It was back up to 452 on the third sample. So very consistent results from Prattley. And the most expensive brand will be testing at $18.16 for four ounces or $4.54 per ounce is this Hercules Pro Poxy 20. It's a steel reinforced epoxy putty. Makes steel hard repairs in 20 minutes. Made in USA. And the most expensive brand, the Hercules brand, did a terrific job at 1,257 pounds on the first. It was up eight pounds more on the second sample to 1,265. It was down again slightly to 1,220. So very consistent results from the Hercules brand. So KBS New Metal came out on top with a very impressive strength of 1,615, JB Weld second at 1,264, Hercules 1,247, OD 1,016, and PC7 fifth at 954. In the next test, we're gonna measure how much PSI it takes to crush each one of these epoxy square blocks. To act as a cushion, I'll be placing a piece of cardboard below as well as on top of each one of the epoxy blocks. Once the block as well as the shims are in place, the test will begin. PC7 is off to a great start at 1,225 PSI. Okay, we just destroyed PC7. Let's take a look at it. Here's what's left of PC7. As you can see, it totally disintegrated. New metal crumbled at 850 PSI, so PC7 holds on to the lead. Not too much left of new metal, totally crushed it. Odie gave up at 500 PSI. POR15 performed the same as Odie at 500 PSI. 
JB Weld barely edges out PC7 and takes the lead at 1,250 PSI. Just like the first round of testing, A plus B once again really struggled at 200 PSI. Unfortunately, the A plus B just did not have very much strength. It took 500 PSI for the EP400 to collapse. So JB Weld stays in the lead. Definitely not as strong as some of the other brands. Quick Steel did much better than average at 850 PSI, but that's not enough to take the lead from JB Weld. Grilla also did much better than average at 750 PSI, but that's not nearly enough to move into the lead. Loctite came apart at 300 PSI. Prattley really struggled at only 125 PSI. Unfortunately, the Prattley just didn't do very well. Hercules gave JB Weld and PC70 run for the money, but 1,125 isn't enough to take the lead from JB Weld. So JB Weld came out on top at 1,250, PC7 1,225, Hercules 1,125, KBS New Metal, and Quick Steel both at 850. Now that we know the PSI that it took the Crested Cubes, we can use a math formula to calculate the weight, or you can just use an online calculator for the math. So JB Weld crumbled at 3,925 pounds, PC7 3,847, Hercules 3,533, and both New Metal and Quick Steel at 2,669. After drilling a in each one of these pipes, we repaired the pipes with putty epoxy. So up next, we're going to see which brand could take the most PSI. PC7 began leaking at 4,000 PSI, but it didn't experience catastrophic failure until a little over 5,000 PSI. Very impressive. Wow, PC7 did very well. PC7 flows a lot easier than the other products, and I believe as I was applying the product to the repair area, a lot more of the PC7 went into the repair area, forming a plug. New Metal did a terrific job at 1,050 PSI, so PC7 holds on to the lead. New Metal did fairly well. As you can see, there's a big chunk missing from the pipe. The OD pipe finally burst at 800 PSI. I found the missing piece from the OD. A large chunk of it blew off and remained intact. You can see how the putty epoxy formed a plug in the repair area. POR did a great job at 975 PSI, but that's not nearly enough to move ahead of PC7 or New Metal. A very big area missing from the POR 15. JB Weld once again did a terrific job at 2,100 PSI and moves into second place behind PC7. JB Weld also did very well, big old chunk missing from the pipe. A plus B once again struggled on this test at only 375 PSI. Unfortunately, the A plus B just didn't do very well. EP400 definitely was above average at 1,075 PSI. There's a fracture directly over the repair area, allowing the pressure to escape. Quick Steel did a terrific job at 2,000 PSI, moving into third position behind JB Weld. Quick Steel actually did very well in the showdown, including this test. As you can see, a very large chunk is missing from the repair area. Gorilla also did a great job at 1,075 PSI. I also found the chunk of Gorilla that blew off the pipe. Loctite did even better than Gorilla at 1,400 PSI. Pretty good crater in the Loctite. Prattley really struggled at 50 PSI. Right after applying pressure, it began to leak pretty quickly. Hercules did a terrific job at 1,750 PSI. Hercules did a very good job in this showdown, and as you can see, a pretty good chunk of the epoxy is missing. So PC7 came out on top at 4,000 PSI, JB Weld second at 2,100 PSI, Quick Steel 2,000, Hercules 1,750, and Loctite 1,400. In a previous video, we used low temperature aluminum brazing rods to repair a big hole in this cylinder head. I'm gonna go ahead and grind out this repair, and then we'll put in some epoxy putty. All right, definitely a big slice through the cylinder head that needs repair. Quick Steel definitely seems like the right product for the job since it can handle up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll cure in only one hour. All right, we're gonna let this cure and we'll be right back to see how it performs. It happens all the time. You're out in the woods, you're trying to pull a vehicle out, and all of a sudden the chain breaks. Of course, you don't have anything to clean up the chain, and of course, duct tape isn't going to be strong enough to fix this chain. So what else can you do? You can pull out some putty epoxy. I have about three quarters of a stick of JB Weld, so let's go ahead and use it to see if we can make a repair to this chain. To make the repair, I'm going to overlap two links and see if the JB Weld will hold. 
The JB Welds had about two hours to cure, so it should be ready to go. Okay, unfortunately the epoxy didn't hold, but this is my fault. I didn't use enough epoxy. So I'm gonna go back and see if I can do a little bit better job. With a name like Hercules, we've got to give Hercules a chance to see if it is strong enough to repair this chain. I'm just gonna overlap one chain link for now, and then I'll add some additional epoxy in a minute. I just remembered I got some leftover new metal, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some of it too. I'm gonna go ahead and add some POR 15. I'm still not done, more POR 15. I'm still not done, I found some Prattly. Let's add some more Prattly. I'm gonna add a little A plus B epoxy. All right, let's add some EP 400. Let's add some PC7 paste. Wow, what a mess. This is about $150 chain repair, it better work. All right, the putty epoxy is fully cured, so let's put this thing on and see how long the engine will run. minutes and the putty epoxy held up very impressive. Once this engine cools down, I'm going to take the cylinder head off and we'll take a closer look at it. Wow, check out this epoxy repair. It's been about 48 hours and this epoxy is fully cured. So let's do some testing on it and see how it holds up. Wow, I'm really surprised the putty epoxy held up so well. This thing's probably stronger than the chain. I'm very impressed with how well Quick Steel held up. As you can see, it's still intact. I don't see any sort of cracking. It's just in really good shape. Really impressed with some of these brands, including JB Weld, which definitely came out on top overall, especially when you consider the value price. KBS New Metal is also a great product if you're looking to buy in bulk. And finally, Hercules is also a very good product if the price is right. All the videos in this channel are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.